Welcome back to Texas Truck Channel and Mahalo or what are the, hey, 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 we're oh, good. Aloha. Yeah. Aloha. We are uh, out here in Hawaii with Toyota and we've got the brand new Grand Highlander and this one is limited with a hybrid max. We're actually really excited to show it to you. We've driven the hybrid powertrain before on some other videos. Check those out. The uh, Actually on our TTC car channels where we drove that. But this is it. This is going to be the freaking barnstormer. It's going to take it to Pilot and Atlas and Pathfinder, which are all big three row crossovers. The old Highlander will stay. In fact, Toyota doesn't like when we say old Highlander. The Highlander is staying where it's at and the, what I'm going to call the three row in a pinch. This is like three row for adults can actually go in the back. That's pretty cool. But in terms of exterior, it's a Grand Highlander. It looks like a RAV4 with a bigger snout. I actually think it looks really well. This thing in pictures doesn't wear its nose as well as it does in person. I think it looks really good. LED headlights. You've got a little bit of a chrome brow here. And then of course the paint is Lexus level quality on this. It is just the best metallic. It's great. You do have detached fog lights down here, which I appreciate just aesthetically. I know a lot of modern headlights have them integrated here, but you want them down low, man. They look cool that way. Painted silver lower lip. I'm a little concerned about that getting scuffed over time, but it is a separate piece. It's replaceable instead of taking the whole thing out. Now, radar sensing. They've integrated it into the logo like a lot of modern products do. Happy with that. There's not a separate thing that clutters up this look down here. You do have your front camera here. The camera system is really, really good on this. So we'll show you that when Craig gets to the interior. Coming around to the side, we have 21 inch wheels. These are the, the Continental tires that all of them are gonna have at this 21 inch wheel package. It's a multi uh, finish, so it's machined with painted as well. I think this looks better than the Platinum wheel does personally. These are 255, 55R20s and they are, look, they're quiet. They've got enough meat to get up this dirt hill that we're on and we'll show you that in a separate video, but they get the job done. Coming around the side, you have a painted silver roof rail with an accessory package up here. All the Toyota goodies, you can pop this off and mount whatever you want up here. There's also a dual pane sunroof or moonroof pano. You'll see that when you get in there. I do want to commend how Toyota does door handles. Unlock, boom, that's it. You have your key in your pocket and to lock it right there. That's it. Super simple, no button to push like some of the Hyundai Kia stuff does. Like Just that works. Lot. Just works. You do have black cladding on the lower portion right here as well. Also on the doors themselves. And that works well for whenever you have anything chipping or coming up that way. Now, I'd love to open this door, Craig, and do a field door yeah, check. Yeah, go ahead, do it. <sighs> How right, annoying. I, I got this, I got this. Yeah. Go down here. There we go. Typical Toyota fashion, and we know what's gonna happen here. It's not gonna be capless, <sighs> but they do have a good cap holder. So if you're gonna go capless, at least have a cap holder that works every time you use it. That's gotta be one of the best ones that we've ever, oh, hey, hey, easy, easy. Premium, regular? Um, let's see here. Doesn't require anything. Okay, good. Yeah, but, but not E85 is what it says. So, but it's not requiring or requesting premium. It's 87 is acceptable in this. That's so, nice. Yeah, and it makes a lot of power. We'll talk about that in just a second. Coming out back, keeping with the big RAV4 theme, you've got taillights that look very similar. They're separated, but you do have a crossbar that's not an actual bulb, but it is tying them together. You've grown the RAV4 properly. Hand handsomely, by the yeah, way. Yeah. Works out really well. Um, look at these letters. We've seen a lot of dimensional letters, which I like dimensional letters, but these are just cast into the molding, kind of like the TRD Pro on the back of the beds of the Tundra. I just, I think that's a good fit. It's not gonna chip off later. There's no glue problem here. It's just one piece. Coming down below, you have on the Hybrid Max, you get Craig, as Hoda puts it, exposed tips, which look- You mean real exhaust tips. Real exhaust tips on the Hybrid, which is great. Um, but on the Max, not the others. On the non-Max, it's just a turned down tip, but it's still a real tip coming to the back, not some fake Volkswagen style. Or Explorer style. Or Explorer. This is just how you do it. Thank you. Good job. Up front to the business end, let's check out this Hybrid Max power plant. Let's Max. Get this prop rod down here in typical Toyota fashion. There it is. This looks just like the 2.4 turbo and the non-hybrid trim. And that's because it is, it's the same gas component, but what's paired to it is a rear electric motor on the rear axle is there's no drive shaft between these, these two power plants. And there's a rear motor and a front engine and that's how it works. And between them is not a CVT. Thank you, Toyota. There's a six speed direct shift automatic transmission, just means six speed auto. And we are really happy with that. There's no CVT weirdness. You can just get in this and it just works really well. There's no driver complaints there. Something else I want to point out is the torque. 400 foot pounds of torque between 2000 and 3000 RPM. That's a small window, but that's using both motors helping out to get that number there. But that's solid. That's like Dodge Durango V8 territory. That's, that's a pretty big deal. No hemi needed to get that done. 
Horsepower combined with both motors is 362, and that's up from what the 2.4 does on its own. So all that covered, I think it's time we hop in the interior and then we'll do some driving. Run, run, over, over here, over here. All right, it's time to check the interior out of the Grand Highlander Hybrid Max Limited. Let's see if we got the key thing. And ooh, we, ooh, ooh, I, I'm it's beeping. It. It's beeping. There it goes. Oh, there it is. So I, I, it wasn't locked, so it locked first what it did. So oh, okay. if my hands were full, I could have locked it doing that. But instead, oh, okay. I did it again and it opened. So my hands, are, I, now my, I'm gonna unload. Here's the room with the third row up, Brian. Look, you can see, here's our backpack. Uh, there's 21 cubic feet back here. Now, Toyota claims you can put a lot of luggage back here. Yeah, they're, they're saying seven suitcases behind I, the third row. I'm thinking that's when the seat's like that. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, I don't know. Real world testing, who knows? Uh, we'll talk about the third row more in a second. But before we get to that, let's check under here. So what we've got, we've got, well, not a lot of storage, except the tablet that you took away from your kid because they got in trouble. Tablet gel. You put yep. it right there, tablet gel. Over here, Brian, this is really important. You see that? Uh, well, that's a big number. 1,500 watts like it should be. Thank you. What that means is you can actually do something. So many cars, they only put 400 watts, which means you can't even run a coffee pot on it. Right. And how can you be hipster at your campsite and not run your coffee pot? So And, and then iron your flannel shirt afterwards. Right. Right. Exactly. You don't want wrinkles in that. Okay. Right. So let's fold the seats down. Let's see how that works. There's no power buttons here, which I think is good. They won't break down the road. One of the things I've learned is this right here. Doesn't do anything. That's really just to pull it back here just in a second. Together. Yep. So you pull this button, you push it down, and then eventually that. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. There it goes. So, All right, that works. Um, and same thing on that side. One, do it one handed here. One handed. Okay. It works. So yeah, yeah, now no look at all the room. Now you can put all the luggage you want, um, and you've got plenty of room still. So let's pull these back up. You just pull this, and then you pull this again to kind of get it back to the spot you want, and you're back in business. Bob's so, your uncle. Bob's your uncle. All right. Let's move to the second row. Before we get into the background, I want you to look over at your door over there. You got kind of two levels. You got the top level where you can put phones, bottles, who knows? Actually, it says no bottles. If you look in there, it says no bottles. Um, and then down below, you can put your hydro flask. It will fit. And yes, we've got the peasant blockers in the limited trim. That's nice because it gets sunny and, you know, I get glare on the iPad when I'm playing my game. I mean, how are you going to get past that? But let's get on to the third row. I just pulled this, look down on the side there, you have a one and a two step. We're going to do just a one step because that's all we need. We don't need to fold the seat flat. Fold it forward. There's a little step built in for you. Real easy to get in the back and it's probably really dark over here, probably hard for you to see, but there is plenty of room back here. Here, let's pull the seat back, all the way back. Look at that. Line I've room. got room. I can actually sit back here and have a C and have room for my cup holder and plug my phone in. All in the third row back in the economy class. So, you know what Brian, we to do, Craig? Yep, it's time for you to see if you will, see if you will sit back. Sit. Let's see if you will fit back here. Pull that seat back. Okay. Okay. No, well, well, it's like well, it's all the way forward. Well, all the way forward. You've got plenty yeah. of room. Forget the person up there. He's not going to have any knee space. But you right. know, that headroom though. Let's see what we got. Look, I'll be honest. For a third row, that's not bad. I don't want to go to Houston in this, but I'll definitely go to dinner in this. And that's I and think not that's complain the thing. about it. Yeah, that's exactly. That's a big deal. Let's get to the second row, and the second row is a nice spot to be as well because look, I shut the door over here. I've got my peasant blockers. I've got my AC. I've got my little captain's chair armrest thingy right there. And then look down here. I've got tablet holders right here for that passenger, and then my cup holders. Yes, and more storage right here. And then if this is in the way and someone's trying to get in the back, I just pull this out. And, I can and just now walk right you, through. you can just walk right through to look at that. That's pretty cool. And it just snaps right back in. That's easy. Look down here in the middle, Brian. This is the limited, not the platinum. The limited, we get heated seats in the back. Platinum, you would actually get ventilated seats. A compelling reason to go to the platinum, I, I yeah, will say. say so. You get the tri-zone climate control, so you can you know, annoy your parents back here and put whatever you want on. USB-C, USB-C, and then 1500 watts even back here, not wait, just in wait, one wait. outlet. Okay, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Most cars don't do that. They usually have it in one outlet, and that's only, and it's usually only 400 watts. So now you can brew coffee while you're driving because it's up here. While you're driving, and then to na help navigate up front, you've got map pockets on both sides because this thing is meant to go places because it's you got your old Ohana with you. All right, moving on to the front row, Brian. It's look, this car's not really about the front row. It's really about the second and third row because when you have your Ohana with you, you want to be comfortable. But let's start this baby up. Let's show the people what we got. And you didn't hear anything start because it's a hybrid and it's actually on. I love the new gauges that Toyota has gone with here. It actually works quite well and it looks good. And gone is the center display. It's kind of split between left and right. I like that. I think that looks really good. You get flappy paddles, which work. And look, you get buttons galore all over the place. 
thank you and you get more USB-C chargers most importantly this one over here look that's at this awesome. little shelf that, that is a Highlander pocket that's a Highlander thing and then look infotainment of course good in all of them the new Toyota UI is wonderful and yep. easy to use works right the only bad news Brian you want to know what it is hmm what this this little shifter right here is oh. and the new hybrid maxes yeah it's the dumbest shifter and I just want to say it's it's not smart don't do it but um yeah. but it does work once you get used to it look 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 we hear complaints about the Honda one being buttons this is worse. It's worse. All right, with that, let's get on the road. Let's check some zero to 60 times and how it rides and drives. Oh, yeah. All right, Brian, we're in the, not just the hybrid, the hybrid max, yeah. which means we got to do a zero to 60 time like we're doing all these. Brian, we've been somewhere all day. We've and been to the zoo. The kids are crazy. They, they just want their freaking tablet. It's time to go. Oh, that's all that's hybrid. All right, let's go. Hit it. Okay. 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. 6.56 6 with me in it. Right. And also, I didn't quite prep that the way I normally need to. Right. Right. We did just get 5.88 off camera. And to be clear, Toyota manufacturer estimated is 6.3. No, 6.3. 6.3. Is okay. Yeah. Holy crap. But we got, yeah, you got 5.88. <laughs> yes. And look. You got your Ohana with you. It's busy. You want to control the chaos. Control the chaos. You got three, you got three rows of chaos. Oh, yeah. You got to get them home. Us. You're hot. You're tired. Let's Look, go. the best way to it. do it is to get there quick. Exactly. Okay, let's talk about the Hybrid Max, though. Yes. I am so impressed with one thing in particular. Mm -hmm. There is no drive shaft connecting these things together. Mm -hmm. There's no clutch pack of engagement or anything right. like that. It simply is a front gas motor and then a separate electric motor in the back. The way it's calibrated feels so linear. It, it feels it, like they're working together. Together, and then I feel like there's some times where it leads with the rear, not the front. Not saying that it has rear-wheel drive bias No, or anything, it's not. But it definitely doesn't feel like... You know, it's not dead. Exactly. Most clutch-based, like, think of the Highlander all-wheel drive previously, the, or the regular Highlander. It sends it out of the front first, and when it needs to, it sends it to the back. This feels like it's doing in both at the same time all the time, which feels wonderful to drive. It, it does. It absolutely does. In fact, Brian, I've got a, a, a suggestion for Toyota. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but before I get to that suggestion, we did take this on some twisties. We did? Yes. Um, and to the things you're talking about, how did it handle and soak up the bumps on the twisties? It did great. You know, look, it's still... The, the problem with three-row crossovers is they have to do everything. Yes. They have to go get groceries. They have to not spill the kids' milk or your coffee. They've got to have a wide payload from one to eight human beings. That's a big payload. Right. They've got to put a trailer on the back sometimes. They've got to do roof racks. They've got to do a lot, so it's hard for them to handle well. But what helps with this chassis is the TNGA platform that it's based on. The new platform is really rigid. It is. And you can yep. tell. So there's a little bit of body motion because it, it needs to. But when you get in the twisties, I didn't feel a ton of understeer. I didn't feel a ton of oversteer. And that has to do with the hybrid powertrain. It's pushing in the rear where it needs to. It's surprisingly good. The team in Indiana screwed this thing together pretty good. Oh, yeah. 100%. Look, we, drew, we drive pre-production vehicles a lot. And this, and this is one of them. And right they've made it, made it very clear this is a pre-production model. What happens is a lot of times is they're not all sorted out yet. Right. Oh, yeah. This one's fairly well sorted out, especially for a pre-production model. Put it on the lot, dude. It, it's ready to sell. I don't right. understand how it's a pre-pro. Right. Exactly. Um, so, anyways, they've done a great job. One annoyance, uh, or not annoyance, a noticing thing from the driver's seat is you forgo a tachometer for a power meter. That is annoying, even in sport mode. Right. I kind of wish there was, like, still a tack somewhere. Yeah. You know, like you said, in sport mode, just have it be a tack. Right. And then maybe show a power meter inside of that tack. I don't know. But I'm being picky. Quietness? Unbelievably quiet. It's pretty quiet. It's very, very quiet. And when it goes in the hybrid mode, when it's running just the EV motor, it's even quieter. And uh, it's, it's also just, and also seamless. It's just, like, yeah, it doesn't you catch even know. Yeah, you have to see the gauge to know when it's doing something different. Okay, let me get to my suggestion for Toyota. Oh, please. Because they're calling this the Hybrid Max Limited. Grand Highlander, I'm sorry. Grand Highlander Hybrid Max Limited. I mean, boring. Just, like, that's boring. a boring name. Like, we can't yeah. even get it. Like, Look, this needs to be the Grand Highlander SS or GT <laughs> or M, M SRT, SRT, SPT, whatever. RST. Add something more. It needs more letters. Here's what I'm saying. This has got the bones GR. and powertrain that, yes. Okay, it needs. okay, okay. I'm waiting for the GR Grand Highlander. 
I can see that. And that look, would be fun. In terms of the handling, they could slap a TRD badge inside of this too. T oh, that's what I was thinking the whole time. I'm also yeah, TRD off road would be fun too because you know what. It'd be, it'd be cool if we did a hill test on this. Hmm. So, you know, there might be a video for that soon. Yeah, stay tuned for that. It's coming. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this Hawaii edition of Texas Truck Channel. And we have really enjoyed Toyota bringing us out here to get a first look on this first drive. I'm impressed. Gotta say. Me too. Can't wait to get it long term. Absolutely. See Thank you on the next one. Take care.